Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's special presentation entitled Buying Contra ETFs for the week of Friday, June 12th, 2020. My name is Glenn Tompkins, and I'm a senior instructor here at Vector Best, and it's always my pleasure to give your presentation. Man, wow, what a ride it's been for the last couple of days in the market. The market has been looking toppy, and we've been talking about it for the last two weeks. Yesterday's move should not have caught you off guard, as you should have been investing with less capital and tightening your stops on your current positions. With that said, what can we do now? With yesterday's big move to the downside, and today trying to reverse that move, how should I prepare? Well, let's do this. Let's go straight into the homepage of the VectorVest software. We can see that today we have a nice rebound, but it's pulling back off of session highs today. But what's key to me is, with yesterday's activity and today's activity, we still are experiencing a primary wave down. That means that the Vector Vest composite has fallen on a week-over-week -week basis for two days in a row. So with that being said, we're getting more of a bearish feel, number one. Number two, one day does not make a trend. And number three, using the color guard like a traffic light, we now have more yellow lights in the color guard. Well, let's do a different thing. Let's take a look at the market timing graph. We'll go up to the graphs tab at the top. We'll change from a stock graph to a market timing graph. This is the vector vest composite now shown on a one year look back period in a graph. I'm going to take off everything else and I'm going to just leave price. Now, looking at price, we definitely know with the many stocks that we look at, we feel that this is a better representation of broad market movement. We got our customers out of the market prior to the pandemic. We got you guys nicely in prior or uh, coming off of the low that happened on March 23rd, depending on how aggressive or conservative you want it to be. Let's zoom in, all right? Here's the pandemic. Here's the low. Here's the move up. We were talking about the market getting toppy all through here over the last couple of weeks. I'll put the MTI on. When the MTI or market timing indicator gets above that level of 1.5 to 1.6, the market is looking for a top. So as we were talking about it, I think a lot of people were going, man, whatever, whatever. So when I say that you should not have been blindsided with yesterday's activity, that's because we knew that the market was looking toppy. This was a time to tighten your stops along the way. Still take advantage of the market up, but tighten stops. Three days in a row, the market has gone down now. We gapped down big Friday or Thursday. Today is Friday. We gapped down big Thursday. We're trying to have a little bit of a come back today, but notice we have a closed green candle. The closed candle means that the price today is lower than the open. Here's the open price at 45.61. The closed price or the price right now is at 45.33. It's green because it is still higher than the previous day's close. So what does this look like? It actually looks like the market is starting to turn over and notice the MTI is still above the level of looking for a top, but the primary wave is down for two days in a row. So today we will talk about playing this possible downturn with contra ETFs, but many of you may not know what those are. So what I'm going to do is go back to the slides and let's talk about what an ETF is first. An ETF is an exchange traded fund, ETF, and it's a type of security that involves a collection of securities such as stocks that often track an underlying index, although they can invest in any number of industry sectors or use various strategies. ETFs are in many ways similar to a mutual fund, and I think a, just about everybody out there knows what a mutual fund is. However, they are listed on exchanges and an ETF shares trade throughout the day, just like an ordinary stock. So like an ETF uh, or like a mutual fund, a mutual fund has load fees. There's times you can get in and times you can get out. There's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts that go with mutual funds. Well, an ETF is sort of like a mutual fund, but trades like a stock. Now I made mention of contra ETFs as the market is pulling down, right? So what is a contra ETF? 
An inverse ETF or contra ETF is an exchange traded fund constructed by using various derivatives to profit from a decline in value of an underlying benchmark like the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, gold, silver, oil, all of those things, okay? Investing in E and inverse ETFs is similar to holding various short positions. Now, I say that because there's many people out there who are not comfortable shorting stocks. When you short stocks, it involves borrowing securities and selling them with the hope of repurchasing them at a lower price. You're actually borrowing shares from your broker. Well, this, this borrowing or shorting process is already incorporated in an ETF or a contra ETF. So for those of you who want to play the market to the downside without having to short the market, contra ETFs may be just right for you. All right, so you can still take advantage of a downtrending market without having to sell stocks short. Now with this information, Contras are a way to get ready to play this market, but make sure you buy them in down days, folks. Remember, you're purchasing a Contra ETF long. You will never short a Contra ETF. Make sure the market is moving in your direction first, and keep in mind, you buy these long and you never need to short them. And that is the beautiful thing about those people who are not comfortable selling stocks short. Now, I'm going to show you how to get into the software and find these ETFs. Let's get back into the VectorVest software, and we're going to go to the Viewers tab. So we'll go to the Viewers tab. From the Viewers tab, we're at Viewers Home. Now, what we're going to do first is I'm going to show you where all of the ETFs, both bullish and bearish, are located. We have an ETF viewer. Now, when you open it up, it shows all of the ETFs that we track, and currently we track 1,625 ETFs. But notice them, some of them are bullish, some of them are bearish, it all depends. And in order to know which ones are bullish or bearish, you know what you need to do? You need this, like you see this one right here, right click on it, view stock analysis report, and look in the description, it will tell you what it does. The investment seeks the investment of 200% of the daily performance of the CSI Overseas China Internet Index. 200% means that you're leveraged, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in this presentation. All right, uh, and invest about 80% of its net assets in financial instruments that provide daily leveraged exposure to the index and or exchange traded funds that track the index. So if you want to learn more about each and every individual ETF or contra ETF, you always need to right click on it and use that data. We will break down what each and every ETF does. So the, the thing about this though, an ETF viewer, both bullish and bearish ETFs are tracked. So in a bearish market or when the market starts to pull back, you want to concentrate specifically on contra ETFs. Let me show you how easy it is to do that. Let's now go to the watch list viewer. And from the watch list viewer, you will see a folder, a yellow group folder called ETFs. You'll click in it and we've done all the work for you to make things easier for you. We've segmented ETFs in a way that makes it so easy for you to understand what you're looking at. Some ETFs track from big companies like Fidelity, um, from Focus Morningstar, from Global X, from Guggenheim, iPath, that's a name that a lot of people know about. Going down, we have NASDAQ ETF. PowerShares is another one that a lot of people know about along with ProShares. They're all segmented for you in this one ETF group. Now, let's start off this way. If you're new to the world of contra ETFs, remember, that's the inverse to play the market to the downside without having to short. How about we made it easy for you to go down to find non-leverage contra ETFs. Now, this is where I'm going to start to talk about leverage. Now, when you look at non-leverage, it's one-to-one. -one. Whatever it's tracking, if it goes up 1%, your contra will go up 1%. When I say leverage, 
if I'm looking at two times leverage for that index or uh, that I'm tracking, then for every 1% it goes up, if I'm two times leverage, my contra will go up 2%. And there's also three times leverage. So the index that I'm tracking, if it goes up 1%, if I'm three times leverage, my contra will go up 3%. Keep in mind, the higher the percentage of leverage, the more susceptible to risk you are. The people who will be using leverage contra ETFs are the people who are a little bit more savvy and who are a little bit more aggressive in trying to play the market to the downside. This is why for those of you who are brand new, we're going to start off with non-leverage ETFs contra. Now, the next thing we need to do is we want to use market timing to see how well these work in a prior down market. I'm going to come back to this in a second. Let's go back to the market timing graph, and I'm going to put this on a six-month graph, and I'm going to use market timing. Well, what's the fastest indicator getting out of a top or getting out of a top or getting in from a bottom we can use? That's right, folks, the primary wave. I'm going to change from the confirmed calls to the primary wave and coming into the pandemic off of the top. The first primary wave call we got was on 221 of 2020 and it lasted up until 325 of 2020. That was a good down market pandemic and let's see how these contra ETFs or playing the market to the downside would have worked. Let's go back to the viewers. Now from the viewers, as I'm looking at a watch list, Something that I want you to keep in mind, this is very important. Because I'm looking at a watch list of stocks or watch list of country ETFs in this, notice that these are gonna be sorted by our master indicator, VST. Now, because that these uh, ETFs track a group of stocks or an index, it's gonna make it very hard for us to track relative value and relative, si uh, relative safety. The indicator that we use the most when looking at ETFs, whether contra or regular, is RT. But put that all together, these are still sorted by our master indicator, VST. What it doesn't take into effect is how liquid these are. So if you're looking at a watch list of ETFs, very important. Always make sure you sort by average volume. Folks, if you need to, write that down because it's that important. Notice that if you just trade it off of the watch list, looking at these contras, non-leverage, some of these don't trade. You don't want to get caught in a contra that doesn't move. So the first thing you want to do is go over to average volume, highlight it or click on it. Now we're looking at the contras that are non-leverage that have the most liquidity. Again, folks, if you need to, write that step down. Now let's move over. What are we in? Pro shares. We're looking at the S&P 500, playing it to the downside. The Qs, the Russell, the Dow, Bear. How about even on treasuries or emerging markets? They're all here for you. And we're trading the ones now that have the highest average volume. But wait, we've got to go back in time, right? So now let's change our calendar to go back to the point where we got that first initial primary wave off of the high prior to the pandemic, which was on 221. So let's go back to February. Let's go to 221. Let's now run this list, still looking at non-leverage country ETFs. Let's make sure we're still on average volume. All right, let's move that over. Average volume. Did I miss it? I sure did. Uh, range volume. Average volume was still sorted by average volume. Excellent. But this is on the night that we got the primary wave down, right? Let's look at the top five. We'll highlight them. One, two, three, four, five. So we got a good mixture in here. The S&P 500, the Dow, the Qs, the Treasuries, an active bearish contra ETF. Let's uh, do a quick test. Quick test of the selected. We're going for 221, and we're going all the way up until now. Man, they're down. You notice something? They are down, but not nearly as down as the market is. But that's not a good thing. You don't want to take it in. We got one winner and four losers. So we got in on market timing. We've got to get out on market timing. So let's change the end date to reflect March 25th. April, March 25th was the down call that we had on the primary wave, right? So we'll do that, 
we'll click on OK. So now my time is set up from the initial call coming off of the high to coming off of the bottom. The bottom was actually on 323. The primary wave would have gotten you back in on 325. Now let's run the test of the top five of the non-leverage country ETFs up 18% where the market was down 28%. Now, one of them did go against us, but you know something in that less than a month's time period, a little bit more than a month's time period, we're up 18%. What a way to play the market to the downside, buying country ETFs long and making money. Now, you'd still have stops in place. Notice that my quick test doesn't incorporate any stops. You would still put stops in place to make sure even as a contra ETF that it wouldn't go against you more than you would like. But what a performance, even if you just bought them, put them in a shoebox and played the downtrend of the market 18% in one month while the market was down almost 30%. All right, that's one way to go. Let's go back into the software Let's ramp it up a little bit, maybe a little bit more aggressive. All right, let's go to two-time leverage, the same date. Now, what does two-time means? For every $1 this goes up, I'm uh, for every $1 this index goes up, the oil index goes up, I make 2% or $2, if I can call it that way, on the ETF. Man, that's a way more aggressive way to go, but it can put more money in your pocket. What's the first thing we do? You wrote it down, right? Because we're looking at a watch list that's sorted by VST, let's scroll over to the average volume. Make sure you have liquidity by sorting the list by average volume. Now, let's go take, and gold was rocking, right? Gold, J-Dust, this was playing it to the downside as contrast. And you know something? Let's, you're going to see something here. We still have our time set up for 221. Let's highlight one, two, three, four, five, and nothing, something else happened. The T-VIX actually did a split during this time period. You're going to see what the results are from doing this as well. All right, let's do a quick test selected to top five. Now, this is a little skewered. Why? The T-VIX was up 731%. That's because we had a begin price of 46.80, but during the time of this test, the T-VIX did split. So I'm going to look at that number and go, wow, that's a lot. But if you were still holding T-VIX, even through the split, you still would have made good money going over this time period. What else happened? Ah, because you opened up yourself to a little bit more leverage, this could happen. This is a learning moment in knowing that as you start to put on more leverage, this can happen. So again, what happened, what else is not incorporated in here is that we did. We don't have stops in here. There's no way I would have let either one of these go against me this much. And notice on the, on the SDS, which was what? The SDS was looking at the uh, S&P 500, went up nicely 46%. The QID, which is looking at the NASDAQ, went up 29%. These two would have definitely been managed out of my portfolio. And even though I know the split happened here, we probably wouldn't have made that much money, but we would have definitely made money in this quick test. All right, so that's looking at two times leverage, still using the market timing. All right. Let's ramp it up just a little bit more. Let's go down to three time leverage contras. All right, again, sorted by VST as a watch list. Let's move over to average volume. Make sure we have liquid contra ETFs. Now we're looking at the Qs. We're looking at or the, the NASDAQ, large cap, S&P 500, semiconductor, biotech, top five by average volume. Let's highlight those. Oops, come on now. Highlight those. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, that's interesting. One, two, three. Wow. All right. Got to get my fingers together. Here's the top five. Let's quick test to select it. Wow, 39% every single one made money. The Qs, the S&P 500. Man, and, and actually large cap S&P 500, all five were different indexes. How cool is that, folks? This is for the people who are afraid to play the market to the downside and many times sit on the sidelines. Why do that when you have a vehicle to help you to make money? Now, for those of you who are a lot more aggressive, 
you were able to take on a lot more money as the market was going down. That's a beautiful way to consistently make money in a down trending market of which we know should be approaching right now. Now, I'm not predicting that it's going to happen. I'm using the power of the software to know that the market was way toppy and now looks like it's ready to turn back around. You're now getting ready to possibly play the market to the downside. Make sure before you pull the trigger on these that the market is moving in your direction. Now, maybe you want to play just the indexes. So guess what? We do have index HID. There we go. Index contra ETFs. Let's go take a look at those. Now, these are just on Here's China index, the Dow, the Russell, the Dow, the S&P 500, the Qs, all of the major indexes right here. All right, still sorted by VST. Let's move over to average volume. Move that over. Let's highlight and look at the top five. One, two, three, four, five. Right click, quick fold. Ah, I could have done it. That's a different way. Here's the quick test. Almost again, 40%. Look at all of the indexes during that time during the pandemic. All went up double digits. Folks, you can't get any beautifuler than that. Beautifuler. Well, I guess that's a now a new Glenism. Horrible English, but a new Glenism. All right, let's close out of that. Now, before we do anything else, I'm going to show you another way that you can do this as well. You can, if you don't want to have to sort by average volume, let's go up to the Unisearch tool. Within the Unisearch tool, we have a folder called ETFs. How about you want to play the best Contras? How about buying Contras? Let's run that as of today. So I'm going to double click, run that as of today. Today is Friday. If the market continues to move down on Monday. Now, guess what? This is going to have both in there, leveraged and non-leveraged, because this is sorted by what? Again, VST as well. Um, if you really want to hone in on non-leveraged, again, do it by way of the watch list. So if you really want to hone in on just non-leverage contra ETFs, that's the way to go. But if you're looking for a combination of whatever the best contra ETFs are to buy in a current market situation right now, run the search. It's already making sure that the average volume is greater than 100,000 shares and that the price is greater than a dollar. It's already setting that up for you. Boom. There you go. All right, so now let's talk about something else. As the market is going down, hopefully you now get an opportunity to gain some confidence to possibly play the market in a downtrending market. All right, let's put this back on a three-month graph to play the market in a downtrending market without having to sell stocks short, right? Well, when the market goes down, what tends to happen? The market goes through cycles, right? The market tops, the market falls, the market bottoms, and then the market rises. Let me tell you something. If this is a good pullback, and everybody's been asking me, well, if the market pulls back, where is it going to go to? Well, we've got different levels of support. Todd will talk about that tonight in the timing section. Um, we've got different levels of support, but if they keep breaking, keep breaking, we do have a hard line in the sand looking at the 323 low. If we fall all the way back down to there and test that, folks, we'll get to another bottom, right? What's the best thing to do at a bottom? Bottom fish. So you're getting the confidence to play the market from the high or from where a market is toppy. You now get to play the market to the downside. But when the market turns around and it's time to go bottom fishing, Bottom fishing is a great way to go. And we just recently had a bottom fishing campaign coming off the 323 low where we made over 100% in our bottom fishing campaign. You want to learn more about that? I figured you would. Let's go back to my slides because I've got a, I got a link for you. www.vectorvest.com forward slash BF for bottom fishing. When you click on that link or you go to that link, it's going to take you to this page. It's called Precision Bottom Fishing for Explosive Profits. And when I say that from the most recent bottom fishing campaign, we're up 100%. How about we just looked at the most recent downturn using uh, from the pandemic. Uh, we were up approximately 30, 40%.
And then when the market rises, giving you an opportunity to make another 100% in, think about them in a few months, how many of you would be happy out of your skull? Many of you would be. This is the value add that VectorVest provides for you folks. This is why you are a subscriber to the VectorVest software to get this kind of timely information so that you can make money. And this is why we do special presentations to help you in any market's condition. So that's what it's all about. Let me get back into my slides. One, thank you for being here. Two, build your confidence, folks. Taking advantage of a downtrending market, but remember, make sure that the market is moving down before you pull the trigger on any new Contra ETF. And also remember, you're buying them long. You do not have to short them. So with that being said, folks, it was my pleasure to give you this presentation this evening. Folks, you're getting a, a golden opportunity to make money both to the downside and if we find all ourselves at another low or another bottom to turn back around and make money to the upside. This is what it's all about. This is no magic pill. This is not the holy grail. But if you want an opportunity to consistently make money in the market, VectorVest proves it to you time and time again. So with that, folks, it's been my pleasure. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Have a wonderful weekend, folks. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the software or would like refresher information about the software, click on this Getting Started video right here. Thanks to all of your input, here's a YouTube video that we think would be perfect for you. Click right here. If nothing else, folks, just hit the subscribe button right here.